Hi there, uh, let's have a look at uh, a problem, an example that asks us to determine average molecular weight using number average method and weight average method or formula. Uh, these are two statistical approach for a specific type of polymer over here, uh, PVC. This problem is taken from uh, your textbook, problem 5.1, page 127. Let me read. Um, assume that the figures, the histograms uh, given represent the molecular uh, weight distribution for PVC or polyvinyl chloride. Um, we want to compute the number average molecular weight, then the degree of polymerization, and then the weight average molecular weight. As you can see over here in the left hand side uh, figure histogram, we have distribution of molecular weight in uh, 1,000 gram per mole along horizontal axis and the number fraction along vertical axis. As uh, you know in the statistical approach in determining well, average molecular weight for polymers, we have these two common approaches. The first one is number average molecular weight and the second one is weight average molecular weight. Over here we use number fraction and MI is the average uh, molecular weight for each range or each batch or <clears throat> bin of these uh, distribution of molecular weight. And over here, WI is the weight fraction. So in order to find or answer the first question, which is the number average molecular weight, we have to use this equation xi can be determined from this curve, this figure, the vertical axis, and mi can be found from this curve, the horizontal axis. Yeah, let's uh, look at this distribution that is found uh, from um, a PVC material. On the horizontal axis, the molecular weight has been divided into these ranges. The first one is 5,000 to 10,000 uh, gram per mole. So the average is going to be 7.5. The next one is 10 to 15. The average is going to be 12.5, so on and so forth, 17.5, 22.5, 27.5, 32.5, and uh, finally 37.5 times 1,000 gram per mole. So the average value for each range can be easily found. From here, you start from here, 7.5, and you just add the size of each range. You see the size of each range is 5. So if I start from 7.5, the next one is going to be 12.5, 17.5, and I just 5, 5, 5. The same thing going to go with the uh, uh, weight average, okay? Weight average molecular weight. So in order to find the values, I look at the very first range. I read the value of xi from horizontal, sorry, vertical axis and the average value of mi. We have it here. So let, let's have a look at this one. So the first range is between 5,000 to 10,000 gram per mole. Therefore, the MI value is 7,500. And the value of XI can be read from this vertical axis. As you can see, the value over here is 0 0.05 for range 1. Look at the second one. The average molecular weight is 12.5. And the corresponding XI, because Remember, for each range, we need to have its corresponding xi. The corresponding xi is um, something between 0.1 and 0.2. To be precise, it's 0.16. Continue this for the third range, which is 15,000 to 20,000. This range and the value of xi can be read from vertical axis, which is 0.22. And we continue this uh, for the rest of the uh, values between 20 to 25 the value is almost um, 25 um, for the next range 25 to 30,000 the value is almost 20 or 0 0.2 20 percent or 0.2 this one is um, I can say 0 0.07 of course we have to be precise and we have to use something like ruler to be precise um, and this one over here in order to find the weight average molecular weight we do similar steps using this graph in order to find the value of WI over here, right? So we do the same step for the 
Next one, as you can see on the right hand side, for this range, which is the same as the very first range in the number fraction curve, read the value 0 0.02, second range 0.1, so on and so forth. So from the first value, we can find these uh, uh, two tables, the first range, we can find this table on the left. Uh, the first column shows the values of molecular weight. So we write down the values of molecular weight for each range, <clears throat> sorry, molecular weight range for each part over here. The second column, we write down the mean value of MI because we're going to use it in order to find M bar N and M bar W. Then the corresponding value of X, XI. Make sure that the summation of these values should be 100% or 1, right? So you can also recheck this one in order to see that the values are correct. And then what you, you're going to do, let me just change the uh, color of my pointer over here. You multiply this by this. Oops, sorry. Yeah. You multiply MI by XI and then you have XI MI second mi by second xi and the next value so on and so forth and then you add them of course this one will give you the value of m bar n which is summation of xi mi similar approach for wi look at these two curves or these two tables you see this sorry uh, this column here is exactly the same column that we have on the left side. Mean values is the same as mean value over here. Of course, WI was read from this table. And WMI is this times this, which is written over here, right? This times this, which is written here. And then we add them up and we find weight average, molecular weight, using this formula by summation of the values. Uh, let's go back to the problem. The, so the value of M bar, N and M bar W, A and C can be easily found. Now, in order to find the degree of polymerization, we know that, that the, <coughs> sorry, we know that degree of polymerization or DP is the average number of repeat units in the average number of repeat units per chain, as you can see also here in this slide. You have to have based on the formula in the center of the page over here. Uh, M bar N is the number average molecular weight that you have already calculated, and M bar is the molecular weight of the repeat unit. Sorry, we need to have uh, M bar N and then divide it by the molecular weight of the polymer. Yeah, in order to find the value of degree of polymerization, we need to have the value of M small m as you can see over here Oops. sorry m is the repeat unit uh, molecular weight and you know in pvc repeat unit is final chloride which has one chloride is uh, one hydrogen is substituted by chlorine therefore there is one chlorine three hydrogen and two carbon we know there um, atomic weight, therefore we use two times atomic weight for carbon, three times atomic weight for hydrogen, and one atomic weight of chlorine, which gives us 62.5, which is the average molecular weight for the repeat unit. Then we divide M bar N, which is 21,150 uh, from the previous slide that we calculated, by the value of 62.5. And this gives us 338. It means that in average different chains of polymers for this specific study or this specific example, however, they have different length, but in average, they have 338 repeat units.